Wizards of the West Coast. Tapping out, slinging spells. I hate your deck. That's game warping. Remember, snow is slow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> There's too much spice on this channel. I'm slowing. What you gonna do? I know. Brutal. Her transgressions affect me because we're married. <laughs> Wowie zowie. You it's made true. a very Gun scary energy. snowman. Yeah. If you really want to support I Hate Your Deck, there's a lot of ways to help support us. Number one way is through Patreon. Patreon is a great place where you get to join our community. We have a Discord where we play a lot of magic with our friends. And there's such a community of people from around the world in our Discord. So if you want access to our deck list, do you want to play magic with a lot of people from all over the world and interact or help brew your decks? The I Hate Your Deck Discord through Patreon will help you get all that done. Hey, if you've been liking I Hate Your Deck, hit the like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notifications when we have new episodes coming out. And we also have bonus episodes. If you want to see those bonus episodes that were too hot for YouTube, join our Patreon to check that out. Wizards of the West Coast. Tapping out, slinging spells. I hate your deck. We want to give you the true LGS experience. We show up, sling spells, and have fun. Now meet our players for this episode. What's up everyone? It's Lynch from I Hate Your Deck and it's time for more spice. And I've got a lot of amazing people here today. I'm actually really excited about today's episode. There's a returning player <laughs> who hasn't been around in like, you know, forever. My lovely wife is here Hello. to join us again. She loves playing games and she's also kind of a big reason why I got into magic gaming heavily because I love obviously playing with my wife and I love playing paper magic with my friends. What's up everybody? I'm Larry, excited to be back here on I Hate Your Deck. Stoked that I get to be playing here with Chrissy today. It's been a while since you and I squared off. Yeah. So. Yeah. She was pregnant. Probably. I was super pregnant. We played at your house in your backyard, but we also, during COVID, were playing over. Uh -huh. You were excited to bring one of your signature Larry Flary decks. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Chrissy Lynch. Uh, it's been a while. It's good to be back and play some magic with my friends. Hey, everybody. My name is Vince. I'm a patron of the channel. I'm a university professor, and I'm excited to see what spice we're bringing to the table today. Let's talk about our commanders and do the rule zero conversation. I'm playing one of the Universe Beyond commanders, Edgin Larcinius Ludius Lutonist? Lutonist. So if you've seen the new D&D &D movie, which me and her saw on a date night, which we actually both really enjoyed, Edwin, AKA Chris Pine, he's an Izzet commander, which I love. Each nine land permanent card in your hand without foretell has foretell. Its foretell cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by two colorless. During your turn, you may pay two colorless and exile from your hand face down, cast it on a later turn for its foretell cost. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, go target creature and opponent controls. Each nine land card in my hand has foretell, so I can pay two colorless to put it upside down. It's exiled, and then I can cast it for its mana cost minus the two colorless. So that's what the foretell is. So when I cast him, all everything will be a foretell. Rule zero, this is a Universe Beyond card. Are you guys okay? Let me bring in a Universe Beyond D&D &D character to the magic. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for the red-blue bard. Yeah. <laughs> Human yeah. bard. Yeah. Let's see it. We're also playing Is It Over Here, and it looks like Chris Pine's grandma. This is Riel the Everwise, three CMC, Is It, and one generic, or a zero three human wizard that gets plus one plus zero for each instant and sorcery card in my graveyard. It also, and this is the meat and potatoes of the whole thing, whenever I discard one or more cards for the first time each turn, I draw that many cards. And this deck's power level is more dictated by what it's not trying to do, which is I'm not trying to draw my entire library in one go okay. and win with something like Thassa's Oracle or Lab Man. I'm trying to fill up my graveyard and like hit with this thing and also run spells like Chandra's Ignition once I fill up my graveyard enough. It's got a bunch of like random little tech things and ways to draw like bunches of cards. It's more, more funsy. It doesn't run a bunch of fast mana. It's got a few rituals and stuff like that. It brings some fun interaction and fun stuff to the game. I am gonna play Edgar Markov. Vampire Knight with Eminence. Whenever you cast another vampire spell, if Edgar Markov is in the command zone or on the battlefield, create a 1-1 black vampire creature token. He has first strike and haste. And then whenever Edgar Markov attacks, put a plus one counter on each vampire control. And he is a 4-4. What do you married. love about your deck? He just likes to come out swinging and creating lots of vampires, and I like to attack. 
It's no combos good. or anything like that. A couple tutors, just getting vampires on the board as soon as possible and getting Edgar out. And it's all about building those counters also. That was your first love of the commander, probably. Yeah, he still is, but Kalia. You know, Kalia's she's got the, too. she's got the new spot in your heart. Yeah. When you're tired, she's fun to play because you're like, oh, I can just drop, drop, drop. This, yeah, like trigger, trigger. It's, you know, I brought Isu the Abominable, who's a legendary snow creature. He's also a yeti. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play snow lands and cast snow spells from the top of your library. Timing rules still apply. But whenever another snow permanent enters the battlefield under my control, I may pay Bants, which is forests, plains, or an islands. If I do, put a plus one, plus one counter on Isu the Abominable. So the deck is called Isu, there's no Christmas, like snow Christmas. I want to play a lot of snow things, make Isu really, really big, and put a bunch of enchantments. A little flavorful with the snow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I have a couple proxy uh, dual lands, if that's okay. Yeah. Totally yeah. cool. I want you to have fun <clears throat> in the show, brother. I hate your deck. Should we roll to see who goes first? Big Let's money, big money, big money, big money. Not, uh, not. not me. Winner. I <laughs> win with a three. I will take that to the bank. Draw for turn. I will play a mountain. I will tap that mountain. I will cast a Wayfarer's Bobble. It's an artifact. I can pay two colors, sacrifice it, search my library for a basic land card, put on the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. And then I'll pass the turn. Take it away. Untap, upkeep, draw for turn. Play a snow-covered forest as my land for turn. I will tap that to cast an Avacyn's Pilgrim. It's a human monk. I can tap it to add one white mana to my mana pool. Pass to Chrissy. All right. Untap, upkeep, draw. I will play a Grim Climb Pathway. In response. Just In kidding. Resp <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? In response, I'm gonna tap it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I will cast Knight of the Ebon Legion. Trigger Vampire for the Eminence. So if I pay two colorless in the swamp, Knight of the Ebon Legion gets a plus three, plus three, and gains a touch until end of turn. And then at the beginning of my end step, if a player lost four or more life this turn, put a plus one counter on him. And then I'll pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Play a mountain, pass the turn. Not a scary turn one yet. I will draw for turn. I will play a Sulphur Falls. It enters tapped unless you control an island or a mountain. I control a mountain. All right. I'm going to tap a Solar Falls and a Mountain. Cast a Braid of Fire. Cumulative mm. Upkeep. Add red to your mana pool. I'm hoping it'll add some fun to my life at some point. Ship it over to you. Pre-mana burn days. I will untap, upkeep, and draw for turn. Play a snow-covered island as my land for turn. Tap Avacyn's Pilgrim, adding white to my mana pool. Tap the other two lands. Cast a Dueling Grounds, which is an enchantment. No more than one creature may attack each turn. No more than one creature may block each turn. That's a problem. Pass. That is a big problem a for big... you. That's game warping. Upkeep, Too many draw. Map. Remember, snow is slow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> There's too much spice on this channel. I'm slowing. It's I'm cooling it off. I'm cooling it off. I'm gonna play a four, but in rounds comes untapped because I'm not revealing a swamp or mountain card from my hand. Move into combat. Swing my little vampire at Vince. Take one damage. Deserved. And I will pass my turn. Accept your terms. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, That's the least of my words. Draw. I'll play a reliquary tower as my land for turn. And then I'll pay two and cast Is It Signet. Is It Signet, pay one generic and tap it to add one mana of each of blue and red to my mana. And I'll pass. Untap, upkeep trigger. Braid of Fire gets a floater mana that's red. I draw a card. I will play an island. I'm going to tap three to go ahead and do what I'm here to do. Cast my commander, Chris Pine, human bard. Each not land card in my hand without foretell is foretell. It's foretell cast each equal to its mana cost reduced by two. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, go target creature and opponent controls. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Untap, upkeep, draw. Play a snow-covered forest as my land for turn. I'm gonna tap two, an island in a forest, to cast an Ice Fang Quaddle. It's a snow creature, it's a snake with flying and flash, but that doesn't matter. When Ice Fang Quaddle enters the battlefield, draw a card. Ice Fang Quaddle has death touch as long as you can control at least three other snow permanents, of which I do pass the turn. Untap, upkeep, draw. What you gonna do? Play Vault of Champion, pay three. And I'm going to cast Drana, Liberator of Malachar. Vampire ally. It's flying first strike. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one counter on each attacking creature I control. Trigger eminence. 
These have summoning sickness, can only swing one, your little dot touch. I have a 3-3. Three, three. Larry, I'm going to swing one at you. I, as the low-hanging fruit, will uh, <laughs> face block one damage. <laughs> Except your destiny. And then I will pass my turn. All right, I will untap, upkeep, draw. Do her transgressions affect me because we're married? <laughs> I'll use the reliquary tower to tap Is It Signet. I'll use the red-blue to cast Thrill of Possibility, discarding Una's Grace as the additional cost to cast it, and then drawing two cards. Are you thrilled? Of the possibility. Are you getting it? Yeah, it's... <laughs> so thrilling, friend. Amigo. Yeah, we are that. So I play an island as my land for turn. Yes, you did. The most powerful land in Magic. I think yeah. many would agree with me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ask how many decks she plays that include that color. Just one. Which one? Attracts an infect. Oh, right. But that's because it's just like... But you do no I just want to kill people. That's yeah, she's it. Like, I'm going to pass the turn after that. Untap, upkeep. I get a Braid of Fire trigger. It goes to two. I get two floating red mana. I'm going to use that to, to tap and crack the bobble. Search library for basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tapped and shuffle. So I'll go ahead and get an Island that will come in tapped and I won't be able to untap it until next turn because the way untap upkeep happens. Draft for turn. Okay, I'll pay one and I'll cast a soul ring. Tap the island, I'm going to cast Serum Visions. It's a sorcery. I draw a card and scry two. I draw first, then scry two. Mm -hmm. Draw. On cast trigger, I get to goad. I'm going to goad Drano. That means it has to attack, but can't attack me. Yes. Then I scry two. So you're literally picking my attacks for me. <laughs> that was the wrong play, man. This will go to the bottom of the library, and I'll leave one on top. Goading that little flyer is the right play. Goading the death touch dude. Pay two colorless. I'm going to foretell a spell. And then? Pass the turn. Untap, upkeep, draw for turn. I'm gonna play a mana confluence as my land for turn. Going to tap it for blue, losing a life and everything else. Five mana. To cast Isu the Abominable, who's a legendary snow creature, who's a yeti. I may look at the top card of my library at any time. I may play snow lands and cast snow spells from the top of my library. Whenever another snow permanent enters the battlefield under my control, I may pay Bant, which is forest, plains, or islands. If I do, put a plus one, plus one counter on Isu the Abominable. Move to combat. I'm gonna swing the Ice Fang Quaddle at Mike for one. Yeah, I saw that coming. One, <laughs> one life damage. loss. Chrissy, I'll pass. Um, I'll keep draw, planes, tap these four, cast anointed procession. It's an enchantment. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens and stuff. It was goaded right, so this mm -hmm. has to attack. Tap Drana and swing her at you. I will take two damage. On the first strike, <laughs> combat damage to a player. I put a plus counter on each attacking creature I control. Oh, only the attacking one. Yeah, That's I know. brutal. It's no, but I mean, ordinarily, out. you'd be attacking with all I of know, these. I know, I would. And that you would, would just be like, every, so it would whatever. be like, bling. Yeah. Before regular damage. It would pass my turn. Untap. Upkeep, draw, tap the reliquary tower for a soul ring. I'll tap the soul ring to activate is it signet, adding is it plus one more generic to my mana pool. Is it? It is. <laughs> and I'll cast Riel the Everwise. Then I'll play a mountain as my land for turn. I will pass the turn after that. I will untap. Upkeep trigger, braid of fire goes to three. So I have three red floating. I will draw for turn. Play a mountain for turn. I'm gonna tap four. I'm gonna cast from Fortel. Nafishni. Nalefishni? Nalfishni. Nalfishni. Beast demon flying. Whenever you cast a spell from exile, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. If it's a permanent spell, the copy gains haste and at the beginning of the next end step, sacrifice this permanent. Nafishni hits the battlefield. Uh, no one has responses. Is that your first or second spell? My first spell this turn. I see. Wowie zowie. <laughs> that, uh, that's a flavor win too. Nafishni is a D and D entity, I think. Very I'm cool. trying to stay flavor winny. This is from the Commander Legends Boulders Gate. I will tap two to foretell this card because it's a non-land card. So that's it. I pass. Untap. I'll keep draw for turn. 
take another look at the watch on the top there. I'm gonna tap an island to cast an Arkham's Astrolabe snow artifact. When Arkham's Astrolabe enters the battlefield, draw a card. And it also has pay one mana and tap the Astrolabe to add one mana of any color. When it enters, don't you also get a counter on Isu? I have to pay for that, so oh, okay, I okay. will pay for that. Thank you. So now it's a 6-6? Six, six? It is a 6-6 six, six now. Like an avalanche, I <laughs> get bigger. Play a snow-covered island as my land for turn. Tap this to make it bigger. So he's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Coming down the mountain for it. <laughs> <laughs> when he first applied to be on the show after the Patreon, he goes, oh man, I got the snowball dude. And I'm like, oh, I've never had a snowball dude on the show. Well, he's coming you after know, all of us real fast. Snowball. If you're true to the abominable snowman as can, the, the avatar from the old computer game, then we've already lost. I never beat that guy. I, I don't know any it. kid who ever did. I love this deck. <laughs> <laughs> This is rad. I'm going to tap three, cast, attempt to cast a Shielding Plax on Isu the Abominable. It's an enchant creature. When Shielding Plax enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature cannot be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. Now's the time, guys. That doesn't seem fun. Now's the time. You that have priority now. I pass priority, but I'm begging you guys to do something about that. Okay. You're like, won't you be my hero, baby? Yes. <laughs> I would like some friendship shown to me, just, just like a little tiny bit. I don't know if I'm asking for friendship here, I'm asking for snowman wamps. Is Isu goaded? No. Or... I'll make you a deal. Yeah. Don't hit me this, this turn. This comment, yeah. And I don't have a problem with that card. Okay. Okay. I'll cool. make that deal. All right. Draw a card from the shield. I, well, I well, oh. Yes, you made draw a card, sorry. <laughs> I was like, Mike's have that. Hit. One, one blue, one blue. I would like to move to combat and yep. swing Isu at Chrissy. No, he's not a flyer. He's not, not right. flying, not trample. I'll do a little jump. Pass the turn. Basically. All right. I'll untap, upkeep, draw, play an Urborg for my land this turn. We all have swamps. Been wanting to play Grixis all along. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna pay three and I'm gonna cast Veto, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, Eminence Trigger, Vampire, Anointed Precision Trigger. Replacement effect. Two. Bang. It is a 1-3. Whenever I gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And then I can play three colorists and two swamp, and creatures I control gain life link until Chrissy, end I'm gonna respond turn. to Vito okay. before you go any farther. I'm gonna pay two and cast Is It Charm, and I'm gonna draw two cards and discard two cards. That's cool. <laughs> hey, it didn't do anything to me, I'm okay. I um, thought he was countering, I was like, oh. I discard two cards, and that triggers Riel, and I draw two cards. Yeah, your, your thing happens. Okay, moving into combat. I'm going to spring Drana at Larry for a three, four, flyer. Pero por qué? <laughs> <Thank you>. why, <laughs> why me? You're the only one who doesn't have a flyer. <laughs> okay. I, I can't do anything about it. Is it because I like bluffed doing something about Vito? No, because I want to get a counter. Okay. Because I was signaling to the rest of the table that Vito is a huge problem. Oh, well, it's a, it's a problem. Because she did combat damage to a player. So she goes up to you, and then I will pass my turn. All right, Larry. All right. Scary Larry. <laughs> I'll untap, upkeep, draw, play an island as my land for turn, tap soul ring to activate is it signet. I'll use the red and the generic leftover from soul ring to cast desperate ritual, adding three mana. I have three red and one blue in my pool. I'll use two of the three red to cast Key to the City. It's an artifact. Up to one target creature can't be blocked this turn. Whenever Key to the City becomes untapped, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. Then I'll use the blue remaining floating, the red, another blue, and the colorless here, and cast Teferi's Ageless Insight. It's an enchantment, legendary enchantment. If you would draw a card, except for the first one you draw in each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. You just like drawing cards, you like discarding them, you're all excited mm -hmm. about what you got going on right now. I'm, this is a healthy Larry board state. I'm pretty stoked, <laughs> The scary Larry then I'll tap key to the city to give Riel unblockable until end of turn, discarding Conflagrate to draw two cards. This is the first time I'm discarding this turn. So one of them, I'll draw one, and then I'll draw an additional from Teferi's Ageless Insight. I'll declare battle. Lynch, I'll uh, attack you with Riel. How much? Six. 
Six commander damage. I'm gonna tap out and pay three, Switch. exiling Echo of Eons from my graveyard. Shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library. So seven. Riel is back to zero power and then draw seven. I will draw 14. Uh, I like you a lot right now. <laughs> you know, this is my friend Larry. That I like to have over in my house. <laughs> like drawing seven cards. I prefer Where's drawing the, 14. I'll, I'll and look, my commander isn't really a threat anymore. Everybody's got new cards. Like, we're having fun, right? And I'll pass the turn. Untap. Upkeep. Four. Red. I will draw for turn. I'm gonna play a command tower. I'm gonna tap eight. Cast. Passionate archaeologist. <laughs> I know about this card. <laughs> Is an enchantment, background, legendary, status even. Mana creatures you own have whenever you cast a spell from exile, this creature deals damage equal to the spell's mana value to target opponent. I will then cast Keeper of Secrets. It's a demon. First strike haste. Whenever a spell you cast from anywhere other than your hand, Keeper of Secrets deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. And it's a 6-4. Chris Pine triggers. He gets triggered by me doing a second spell. <laughs> Chris Pine likes to be triggered. He's all mad. Star Trek isn't happening. He's like, damn it. But maybe if I got my D&D franchise. Good luck. So Chris Pine is going to goad a creature. Are we friends? Who do you want to swing that? The snowman at? Larry's got 14 cards in hand. So if that's the way, then I guess I'll goad your guy. Okay. I will go to combat. Sure, I'll hit you for four. Okay. In the air. It smarts. Half the turn. I'll untap, upkeep, draw for turn. Let me take a peek at what's coming next. That doesn't really help. Play my scrying sheets, which is a snow land. I can tap to add one generic to my mana pool, or I can pay one generic and one snow mana to tap it to look at the top card of my library. If that card is snow, I may reveal it and put it into my hand. That is a snow permanent, so I'm gonna tap one to bump up the snowman. He's an 8 8. Tap my Avacyn's Pilgrim and a forest to cast Sithis. Harvest Hand, legendary enchantment creature Nymph. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, I gain one life and draw a card. Not snow. Not snow. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. Do the nymphs like snow? That's the question. They do. I'm going to tap one generic and one blue to try and enchant Isu with Snow Devil. You all seen this card? Uh, Larry inspires me also to find kind of lesser used cards. Ice <laughs> Age. <laughs> yeah, Ice Age. Fallen Empire. Yeah. What is that? It's an enchantment that says target creature gains flying. Oh, as, as long as you control any snow covered uh, lands, that creature also gains first strike when blocking. <laughs> Weirdly. <laughs> Only when blocking. <laughs> Dude, that's about as good as like banding or land walk. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> banding can be really good, man. I've Trigger got uh, Sithis. Draw okay. a card, gain a life. Got your life gain. <laughs> Thank you. Snow Devil. Yeah, snow Devil. Devil. I'm just picturing your no snowman on a, like a hang glider, you know, <laughs> jumping off this Matterhorn type thing, you know, like, you know, one of those squirrel suit dudes. Yeah. I have no response. Only we cannot target it? Yeah, because of shielding plaques, enchanted creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. Functional hexproof. I'm gonna move to combat. Swing Isu at Mike Lynch for eight. Oh. In the air, because your flyer is tapped. So I take eight commander damage, yeah. and I take it off my life going to 25. It's scary for me. Chrissy, I'm gonna pass the turn. On top. A big key, snowman. Draw. I will play a plateau. I'm trying to remember if I have a Psych Rift in here. <laughs> that would be very good. Tab six. I'm gonna cast Edgar. He does not get the Eminence trigger. But he does have haste. Yes, he Ooh. does. Moving into combat. Swing. Edgar Advents. I will block with the Ice Fang Quaddle and your Edgar will still be alive. It's on the attack one. trigger, they all yeah. get a plus yeah. one. Yeah, that's a good looking board state, you yeah. know? I can't do anything. She needs to remove player. Yeah. I will pass my turn. Untap, keep, draw, play an island as my land for turn. I'll use Reliquary Tower to tap Is It Signet, casting Goblin Electromancer. 2 2 Goblin Wizard. Instant and sorcery spells I cast cost two less to Ooh. cast. Yuck. And my commander is good. Goated. You made true. a very Got scary engine. snowman. Yeah. Larry's got 14 cards. Yeah. <laughs> he's keeping his eye on the board. He, I have your he's like, he he the counter's going up on the, the snowman, truth. but the he cards are the growing over it. there. I mean, I, I get it, guys. I really do understand. I'm gonna declare battle as a show of good faith. I'm going to just attack for zero on Vince. Good faith? 
Yeah. And I'm not making it unblockable, mind yeah. you. Yeah. But you've got a bunch of mana open. I do. Sure, I will attempt to block with Sithis Harvest Hand. Riel gives Sithis like a warm grandmotherly hug. Sithis no responses so to kill this the... Sithis? No. And then I'll pay one in my second main phase and cast Gamble. <sighs> I'll search my library for a card. Search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then discard a card at random. And shuffle your library. Yeah. Collectively, I gave you guys 21 cards. <laughs> <laughs> but you gave yourself. I mean, that's how that works, right? But you took what I wanted in that Do you hand. want to be the one responsible for seeing what you pull? Sure. Don't mm. ruin my world, Chrissy. Please. Mm. Magic. What is it? Hands. Damn, that's a bit of a bummer. Is it charm? And that draws me two cards from Ageless Insight? Oh, oh because of Rael, not right. because. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Ageless just makes you draw a second one. one. I'll pass the turn. Untap. Upkeep trigger, this goes to five. Draw a card. I'm gonna tap a soul ring and a mountain. This will be reduced by two because I'm casting it from its foretell. I am casting Inspired Tinkering. It's a sorcery. Exile the top three cards of your library until end of turn. Exile the top three cards of your library until the end of your turn. You may play those cards. Create three treasure tokens. So, because I'm casting it. Oh, you cast it from exile. Because I cast it from exile, it's going to trigger, trigger. So I have two triggers on the stack and a third trigger that says if I cast it from exile, I may copy it. Should I? I do need targets. Two Hold on. copies. Can I, can I throw in an effect there? This for blue is one life. Tap this to tap the Astrolab for white. Cast a Dovin's Veto. <whistles> this spell can be countered. Counter non target creature spell. You get a copy I get and you copy do get the two triggers. And I get the two triggers. Now, did the triggers. 10 total damage in two increments of five. All right, I'm going to do 10 damage to you yeah. <laughs> off of the Passion Archaeologist and the Keeper of Secrets. Fair. Treasure. Three treasure tokens. No. The exile the face up, right? So you see them all. Yes. Blasphemous Act, Gazileth, Prismari, Reinterpret, Counter Target Spell. You may cast a spell with equal lesser money without paying its mana cost from your hand. Ooh, that would be a nine damage twice for 18 if I Blasphemous Act. That would send us all to the Stone yeah. Age. Is that the only way to deal with you? I'll go to combat. Hey, buddy. Yeah. You can only attack with one creature. Mm -hmm. Would you That's like right. to make that creature unblockable? For the low, low price of not attacking me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Uh, I'm gonna choose Keeper of Secrets. All right. I will attempt to go to combat. Okay, I'll respond. I'll tap key to the city and give Keeper of Secrets unblockable. All right. Discarding a card, that card will be an island, and I'll draw two cards. Claire Attacker, I'll do Keeper of Secrets. I'll send it at you for six. Take six. Hey, 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 hey. You swung that no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Welcome to I Hate Your Dad. Thanks for having me. <laughs> hey, I love that. You've been great. Your snowman was great. I've seen crazy. these awesome spells. Came out scary Larry. Yeah. You won his heart. I think that's a wonderful thing to we do. Out. Are you going to put him at one life? I will tap two. Tempting to cast Blasphemous Act because there's more than eight creatures in the battlefield. No field. effects for me. So I can literally just cast it I for that. I can't do anything. So that's gonna kill everything, right? <laughs> wow, pretty awesome, guy. So you you, you, choose, you choose your targets. Those are cast triggers. What if there was a ch change of events and I pointed them all at Larry? Maybe you know, it's inquiring not. Inquiring minds want to know what the oh, triggers I are. I <laughs> two blasphemous acts. He would have to be able to counter it twice. Nine here and nine here. Going to ten. Heavy I gotta breathing. melt your snow a little oh, bit. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm coming right. with the I'm down to 23. He's slowing down your roll. Yeah. He's slowing the roll of the snowman. I yeah. think I'll tap out and I'll crack a treasure going to two. I still haven't played the land for turn yet. Cast, reinterpret while the blasphemous acts are on the stack. You may counter target spell. You may cast a spell with equal or lesser value from your hand without paying its mana cost. So because then I'm countering a nine CMC Ooh. spell, I can cast another hand from my man without paying its mana cost, correct? Mm -hmm. Gross. You're countering both Blasphemous Acts? So I'm gonna counter both Blasphemous Acts. I can play two cards, man and value less from my hand. Two instances of four. Yeah. To then deal damage. So I'm definitely gonna do four here for Damn. the first one. Vince, you're getting done dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and then four here. 
I can play step from my hand without paying its mana cost. Basically so less than anything. The first spell I'm going to cast from my hand for free will be Wild Magic Sorcerer. Okay. The first spell you cast from exile each turn has Cascade. Ooh. That seems fun with what I'm doing with my deck, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. I think so. Then the second spell from my hand for free, nine or less, will be a Thran Dynamo, which you can tap for three colorless. Is I'm going to tap a Thran Dynamo, crack two treasures, which will leave me one colorless floating from the Dynamo, and I will go ahead and cast Gazlith Prismari. It's a flying elder dragon. When it enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. So now the treasure token gets to come back. Artifacts you control have add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast instant or sorcery spell. This technically hasn't happened yet because I do now have two more triggers. Now it's fire triggers gonna give me two Galzaleas, because legendary, so one's gonna die, but I'll still get the two treasures. But before that happens, these two triggers will go off. Passion Archaeologist and Keeper of Secrets, where I can send damage to the mana value of four and anchor. I'm gonna do the first four here. Mike, you've been whomping pretty hard, bud. I will have to send it at you, yeah. Chrissy. Chipping at you <laughs> for sure. I'll pass the turn. Tap. I'm pulling for you. I wanna draw for turn. That will get the top of my one turn. That's not a life gain aura. <laughs> oh, I forgot to play land. No, it's too bad for you. Oh, I suppose mm. I should've just done that. And and play a uh, glacial floodplain as my land for turn. I'm going to tap this. Make it big. And it's too late for hot sauce. Uncle Skies, the sauce that's even better on food. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Let me move to combat. Yep. I'm gonna swing Isu at you with the oh, I do. It's a 9-9. Nine, nine. I'll block with Gizaleth. Go to second main. Gonna tap Avacyn Pilgrim for white. Tap this to tap the Astrolabe for white. One generic and one green to try and cast. I'm gonna put a Day of Judgment on the stack. Sorcery destroy all creatures. I'm okay with it. <laughs> if it's, yeah, we gotta kind of. <laughs> it puts us all back. This is your kind of problem over there. Oh, Larry. I'll pay one and cycle Forgotten Cave, paying one red. Triggers Riel. So on discard, I draw one and then draw an additional here. And then the cycling has me draw one, so I draw one and an additional there. So I draw four cards from Cycling Forgotten Cave. That's why I built this deck. <laughs> this is this is awesome. This is showing me why I should have just killed you. Regret. <laughs> <laughs> um, Resolves. I'm okay with the day of judgment. Yeah, you. I was never gonna counter it, by the way. Oh, okay. I'm really bummed. I forgot to play the land. Wah wah wah. Yep. Pass, Chrissy. All right, on top. Draw, pay two, and I'm gonna cast a Orzhov Signet. They're also awesome. I'm gonna pay two, and I'm gonna cast Indulgent Aristocrat. It is a one-one life link. I can pay two, sacrifice a creature, put a plus one counter on each bamboo I control. I'm gonna trigger. No, oh, that's right. Trigger. Or a replacement effect. For the other one, Viscera Seer. And then that Eminence does trigger. two. Another two, jeez. And I can sacrifice a creature and scry one. Tap three. And now I'll play a Command Sphere. Pass my turn. Untap, I will not pay for key of the city. Upkeep, draw, super cool looking mountain. Staying alive, staying alive. Staying glass. Uh, no, he said staying glass. Oh. <laughs> Tap the soul ring to activate Is It Signet. I'll use the floating generic to cast a Library of Lang in German. I can't read in German. It basically makes it so that I skip my discard step. And if I would discard a card, I may instead put that card on top of my library. If an effect would make me discard a card at random, I can choose which card to discard, I believe. And I have Is It floating. I'll cast Ominous Seas. Whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seas. Remove eight foreshadow counters from ominous seas create an 8-8 blue kraken creature Ooh. token two four six seven manias i'm gonna pass the turn now on top braids goes to six for the upkeep trigger i draw a card i'm gonna tap three and dynamo for a three i'm gonna tap a mountain and an island and i'm going to just go ahead and recast my commander i'm gonna tap the soul ring for two i'm going to foretell this card i'm gonna tap another two i'll foretell this card i'm gonna play Steam vents, I'll let it come in tapped so I don't shock it in because life is an issue right now. And then I'll just pass the turn. 
Ship it to you, Vince. Destroyer of hopes and dreams. <laughs> <laughs> that's only when I'm grading. Wrong <laughs> Those are, that's too real, maybe. Yeah. Whereas Peter says artifacts. Gonna play a war room. It's my land for turn. I tap for seven. Seven to cast Isu again. Uh, after casting Isu, I'm gonna pass the turn, Chris. All right. Untap, upkeep, draw, tapping out. Wow. Gonna cast Edgar. Moving to combat. Five damage at somebody, yeah. I'm swinging five at Lynch. I was kinda hoping she was gonna say Larry for a second. It looks like Larry's got a plan for that, though. Counters. Oh, all your guys, yeah. Yeah. And after that, I'll pass my turn. Prior to the end of the turn, time has come to see who's got counter spells. I'll pay seven and overload Cyclonic Rift. Ew. Secretly, I'm being your friend. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and, in response, crack the two treasures for is it? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's a must. See, you should have hit Larry. Well, yeah. <laughs> should have hit Larry. Come what on, did he, what has Vince taught us since he's been here? His first episode, he's already taught us you hit Larry. <laughs> so, are we resolving know. this? Resolving yeah, it, right? I'm... Yeah. All your stuff goes So, back everything? Down. Yeah. Two I am. Oh, two these two as well. Oh, that mm -hmm. hurts. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on one second. So it's still the end of my turn? Yeah. So I have to discard. I'll activate key to the city, discarding conflagrate. So I'll untap, untaps, I'll pay two for key to the city to be able to draw a card. I'll draw an additional from Teferi's Ageless Insight, putting two counters on Ominous Seas, and then I'll draw for turn. Ew. Putting God, another counter on Ominous Seas. <laughs> I'll play an island as my land for turn. I'll pay four and cast Brawlin, Sky Shark Rider. Ew. Has partner with Shabraz the Sky Shark, which is irrelevant in this deck. And has, whenever you discard a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Brawlin, Sky Shark Rider. And it deals one damage to each opponent. No, it does. It's still technically. I'll pay two and cast Cathartic Reunion. As an additional cost, I discard two cards. I'm gonna discard Sky Diamond Thought Vessel. Draw me no cards off the discard. It's gonna put two counters on him. And each take two. And each of you guys take two. The Cathartic Reunion is gonna draw me six total cards from Teferi's Ageless Insight, putting six counters here up to nine. I'll pass the turn from here. Untap, I'll keep draw. Tap one blue, I'm gonna cast a soul ring. I'm gonna tap the soul ring, floating two colorless. I'm gonna use one colorless and one red to cast Passionate Archaeologist. Responses? No, this is your, okay. hold on, hold on. Tapping in. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, that resolves. I'll use one colorless. Is it, and one colorless to recast my commander. I'll respond. Discard an island and another card rather than pay foils mana cost. So I'll discard Blasphemous Act and Island to pay for Foil's mana cost, countering your commander. Those two discards are gonna trigger Brawlin. Each of you will take two damages. I'm melting. I know. <laughs> Chris Pine goes here. He has a name, but it's Chris Pine. He's died twice, he died once before. For free, I'm casting Talisman of Creativity because it's two less for my Fortel. Nothing triggers, unfortunately, very sad face. I'll tap three to cast a gutter snipe. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. I want to deal with this, <laughs> this, this issue. You probably should deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. But then my dealing with the issues, I'm going to kill him. Issue. I might just be killing him also, Mike. Just I'm going to get sky sharked regardless. So. Whenever Larry discards them, He's going to die. Gonna die. So I guess, who do you want to die to? Gutter Snipe or? I'll die to Gutter Snipe. Yeah. That's, a, that's a EDH staple. <laughs> I'll tap Command Power for blue, and I'm gonna foretell Reality Shift. I'll exile this, and you'll manifest a top card of your library. I'm gonna respond. But on the cast trigger, each person's gonna lose. So dead. in so response, dead. tap Key to the City, discarding an island, dealing one damage to each of you guys, making Brawlin unblockable and I'll hold priority, so this hasn't happened yet, and I'll pay two and cast Thrill of Possibility as an additional cost. I'll discard Wayfarer's Bobble and draw four cards, dealing another damage to you guys from the discard on Brawlin. Then I guess Brawlin gets ghosted. Now you put the top card of your library down and it's a two-two creature. Okay, that gets exiled. It's a manifest. I can play land. I'll play a strip mine. 
How many cards do you have in hand? I guess I would just do a bunch of discarding, huh? Yeah, I have piles of cards in hand. I think 16. I'd kill you if he discarded his whole hand. So I will be passing the turn. On tap, upkeep, draw. Tap six, and I will cast Edgar. He right. has haste. Do you have any blockers, Larry? I have 13 counters here, so I That's can remove right. eight and make an That's eight right. eight. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> it's gross. It's so gross. It's so gross. It's enchantment. Hey, you for five, Mike. That's all I got. Pass. Yeah. Prior to the end of the turn, I'll remove eight counters from here, taking it down to five, make an eight eight Kraken. Then I'll untap. When I untap, I'll pay two for the key to the city trigger. If I do, I draw a card. Teferi's Ageless Insight doubles the number of cards I draw. Ticks that up there. Then I draw for turn. Ticks up there. An island as my land for turn. I'll pay three and cast Seething Song, adding five red mana to my mana pool. It's the drawing discard shenanigans. Yeah. Teferi's Insight's just putting in work right now. Yeah. Have you named Teferi on a card? It's usually pretty it's strong. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I'll use four of this mana and cast Surly Badger Soar. Whenever I discard a creature card, I put a plus one counter on him. Whenever I discard a land, I create a treasure token. Whenever I discard a non-creature non-land, Surly Badger Soar fights up to one target creature I don't control. I'll use the one remaining floating and two more. Rolling out Sorry. hopes and dreams. Three more, oh, casting nice. Collective Defiance escalated once. The once I will do will deal four damage to Lynch, and then I will discard all the cards in my hand and then draw that many cards. Oh. One, two, three, you decide. four. You totally decide. But then I may fight creatures. I so. should have got rid of it a long time ago is the problem. Mm -hmm. So 15 I'll discard and then I'll draw 30 because of the Ageless Insight. This is gonna go to my graveyard and I'll fight this guy. Ew. Two creatures will go to my graveyard, putting two plus one counters on this guy. Four lands will go to my graveyard, making treasures. <laughs> I should have killed Larry. Mm -hmm. Always kill Larry. The snowman got me scary. You, you diverted <laughs> my attention. These will go Larry's to the like, top exactly and I'll draw 30. One, two, three, four. I'm Larry's plants. Seven, and then she made me nine, feel seven. bad for not hitting her. I should have sticked with the right plan. This is just creatures. Okay. You can wipe it, like I said earlier. Just four treasures. <sighs> Great. How do you even decide what to play with all those options? Yeah. Big thinkies. Uh, it's yeah. with 30 cards in your yeah. hand. <laughs> I'll declare battle. I'll attack Chrissy with the 8-8. Eight, eight. And then prior to damage, I'll sack two treasures and cast Fists of Flame. Draw a card until end of turn. Target creature gains trample and gets plus one, plus oh for each card you've drawn this turn. So it's currently getting plus <laughs> 30 one shotting you 31 it's fucking sorry, 32, rude 33 35 <laughs> i've done nothing to you lynch is over here lynch is next i know <laughs> so 35 43 tentacle octopus it's an 88 kraken with plus 44 and trample yeah it's a kraken 45 rude then i'm gonna pay two am i gonna untap no i'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna pay two, <laughs> flashback, conflagrate, discard so. X, and pitch my hand to roast you for that much damage. And deal I blackjack to you, Lynch. Deflecting SWAT to your face. Just kidding, don't have enough mana to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Would I have had a response? <laughs> you must have had a counter You've had to have something in there. No way Come on. Have a counter spell. Would you have been able Out to counter this? Out of 30 cards? I shouldn't have been so greedy. I should have kept that. I was kind of hoping I'd have my commander. I kept waiting all last time. I was like, I've had this for a while. I was like, oh, deflect. No, nothing is time. No yeah, time. you know, I mean, that. Might have just wow. gotten me, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like if you, if you had it. one more mana. If I had, 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 had this, divided, you got rid of my two treasures. You got rid of all my other targets. Yeah, I would have, dude. I would have had you. Yeah, and, and, and that would have been like, oh yeah, greed is good. No, it's not. If you had done it for seven, you would have killed me, bud. Oh. Yeah, 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 dude. Yeah. That would have been sick. That would have been I would not have been mad at all. One mana short from like the play of the century. So I think I'm sleeping the couch since I invited <laughs> Larry to play with Chrissy. I should have had someone else play with my wife when she's come back for the first time in two years. 
Yeah, when you put it Larry like that, it doesn't Larry sound good at all. Yeah. Choice. Well, he didn't let me play, and then you just killed me. I think so literally the like, last time out. she was on the it show was like well. two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Larry Larry's ruined the all worst. the hopes and dreams. That's a, yeah. So how did you kill me again? I cast uh, Conflagrate from my graveyard what for its it flashback the... cost. Flashback, double red. red. I used my last two treasures. Discard X. X will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my god, that's six, how much seven, damage is done? Eight, yeah. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 1, 21. Yeah, blackjack. See, I think you're all, he's also like, why did you invite me to play with Larry today? <laughs> no, I wanted to play with Larry. <laughs> 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 Don't feel for Larry's guilt trips then if you should just kill him first. Always. I took a fair amount of damage, three quarters yeah. of my life total. I could have killed you. You might have done. I failed the Kill Larry World Peace Commission. <laughs> I'm gonna have to show up to our groups Kill we Larry get together and they're all gonna confront me about the fact that I failed, that I got distracted by snowman. Yeah, Kill Larry World Peace has like one tenant, dude. It basically takes a collective so take and gives you all damage. one job. <laughs> I got the negatives. Hey, good game. Good, another good win. <laughs> like, hey, always good game. Like, I good know, game. I was going to say, always fun to have you back. Good game, Larry. You're my wife. It's great <laughs> it's, having yeah, you back. Yeah. It just, my board looked. That snowman did it that It just looked you. really pretty. It just didn't get to do anything. Well, How was your first else. time on the show? It was super fun. It's very spicy. Yeah, I hope to be back. You get that, scary yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. A flying It does do that, but then Voltron. Thanks for coming on the show, though. Thanks for having me. Mike, you were you were big scary throughout yeah. the entire I scary, thing. I guess. Every other Friday, watch new episodes of I Hate Your Deck. Until next time, peace. If you want to support I Hate Your Deck, please consider joining our Patreon. It's an excellent community that we have built with people from around the world where we play magic in our Discord using Spell Table. If you haven't had a chance to play online magic yet, try out our Discord. It's a great community where people are gaming daily. And every Thursdays we have Commander Day where people play all day and night, but the community's gotten so big, Commander Day is almost every day at I Hate Your Deck. I Hate Your Deck would like to thank our sponsor, No Pulp Media. It's where we're shooting right now and it's where a lot of people come to record music or do podcasts. So if you're looking to do that, check out No Pulp Media here in Long Beach. Time for the Patreon shoutouts. I'd like to thank Jonah08, Tyler Massey, and Deshaun Gilmore. Thanks, everyone. If you want a shout out, you need to be a tier four or tier five patron where we give shout outs. Now, we love all of our patrons, but it's just one of the perks of being a tier four or tier five patron. Without you patrons, we wouldn't be where we are today, and we wouldn't be able to keep making content. So thank you so much for helping us make this show a reality, and we're really excited to keep bringing you great content for the years to come. I can't wait to be able to bring my son on the channel once he gets old enough, let me tell you. I hate your deck. Wizards of the West Coast, tapping out and slinging spells. Wizards of the West Coast. Join the I Hate Your Deck Patreon exclusive Discord to get the various benefits and be able to play Commander daily with people from around the world in our global community.